We'll discuss the election further. We're joined by Dr Adam Lockyer from the US Study Centre. Adam, good to see you. Good morning. Uh, let's uh, obviously start with Iran. Um, mm -hmm. The election of Hassan Rouhani perceived to be a moderate mm -hmm. cleric. How is this likely to be received in Washington? It will be cautiously um, well received by the United States. And we've already seen statements out by the White House saying they, um, they welcome the election results, um, they respect the election results, although it's not necessarily Iranian politics which they have issue with. It's their policies. And so unless they see definitive change in Iranian policies, you're unlikely to see uh, definitive change on the American side either. Well, the most central policy in question, I guess, is that of uh, Iran's nuclear program. The US has already said it's ready to engage directly over Iran's uh, nuclear program. And in fact, there is some history here because Rouhani himself was the, the chief negotiator for the, for the program. Uh, so can we expect some warming of relations over this particular issue? Well, perhaps we might see a bit of a change in language, uh, at least in the short term, until we see action. I think what the United States will be most focused on is a change in Iranian policy towards its nuclear program. And if there is change, you'll see a reciprocal change on the United States side. Well, what should we make? The fact that he's a cleric, uh, he was the only cleric standing, uh, what should we make of that? Um, I'm not sure that it's going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, and I think from the United States perspective, um, they're not going to take that into a, a you know, a major point, part of their policy. What they're going to be focused mostly on is a change in policy. OK, so clearly the United States, I guess, is, is, would be glad to see the back of, uh, of Ahmadinejad, mm -hmm. uh, who obviously provoked the West uh, continually over his uh, eight years. Uh, however, Rouhani has urged the world to acknowledge the rights of Iran. Mm -hmm. What's he saying there? Um, I think that he's going to take a pretty... Um, this is going to be more of the same in terms of uh, many of the key policies. I think there's going to be maybe a change in the language used between the leaders of Iran and the United States. Um, but I think that until we see change in direction in policy, uh, there won't be a, a huge warming of relations. OK, uh, still in the Middle East, let's move to the, uh, the trouble spot that is Syria. And uh, diplomats have been indicating that the United States uh, is considering uh, establishing a no-fly zone mm -hmm. over the country. Russia, however, says that would violate international law. Mm -hmm. How difficult would it be for the United States to establish a no-fly zone? Um, they'll be, they're capable of establishing a no-fly zone over um, Syria. However, it is going to be a big job. It is a, a, a large country with a sophisticated air defence system. And so the United States would have uh, a job on its hands to first suppress the air defences of Syria and then to establish the no-fly zone. So those advocating intervention in Syria are saying, look, the US did it successfully in Libya. Why then can't that translate to Syria? But it is much more complicated in Syria, isn't it? It is. And uh, Syria is a much more formidable opponent than Libya, uh, whereas the United States could uh, fairly easily and quickly suppress the air defences of Libya and then let the job be done mostly by the Europeans uh, to, to, for, for the no-fly zone. So it was the French and the British um, shouldering much of the burden. Whereas in Syria, the United States would have to do more of the job. Now, now certainly the international community uh, and the US are uh, encouraging both sides in the Syrian conflict to negotiate, but they need incentives. What incentives are they? Um, well, there's supposed to be a peace conference this month in June uh, in uh, Geneva to have a negotiated uh, summit to this conflict. Um, and all the key players are there, both internally but also externally. Uh, now, at that conference, both sides need to go to the negotiating table with the view that they can't win militarily, that they need to negotiate their way out of this crisis. Um, that's what the United States wants, and that's why their, their language and their, their, um, their policies towards the rebels have been toughening up. Adam, um, just briefly, uh, in your PhD you studied the effects uh, international intervention has on civil wars. Mm -hmm. What would the likely effect be of US intervention in Syria, do you think? Escalation. So the violence will escalate in Syria, uh, but it would really depend upon the type of assistance that the United States gives to the rebels. Particularly so, when they're talking about arming the rebels. Exactly. So when they bring arms into Syria, if they only bring in small arms, uh, we will see an escalation in the conflict, but it will be of a moderate 
um, the dimensions. Whereas if they start to bring in um, anti-aircraft missiles, anti-tank missiles, then the Russians are likely to, um, to respond to that and we'll see a, a huge spiral. Dr Adam Lockyer, thanks for your analysis. Thank you.